Uh, yeah, so this just happened. Seems that my overflow tank here has uh, split and barfed all of my coolant all over everything. It's, it's literally running out of the heat shielding here. Got our new coolant reservoir in. So let's get this thing put together and put into my blue Mercedes. Now these new reservoirs have a little bit of a different setup. Evidently they've stopped making the direct fit for the 123s. So this is, I guess a 126 model tank, which had a coolant level sensor. So you get this little kit from Mercedes that consists of a little plug an O-ring and a snap ring. Essentially, what we're gonna do is take the O-ring, put it onto this plug, then this port here, so this gets a hose on the very front of the reservoir. This one would get the level sensor. So this plug just kinda seats down into here. See that kinda popped down in, took a little pressure, just set it on a desk. And that's down in. Now we're going to take and put our external snap ring over the top so that, that can't come back out. After a bit of a battle with that uh, snap ring, finally got it on. So this is ready to go in. We just got to pull the old one out, put this one in, and refill the system. And then hope that the only thing that was wrong is this old fatigue tank. So let's pull this thing out and take a look at it. I'm going to pull the two rubber hoses off, or well, three technically, I suppose. This one just doesn't have a clamp back here, or overflow tube. I'm going to take the two clamps off of these. So one thing you may notice about this, where this split on me, on the very front of this tank, it's got kind of a raised part here, and Right in the middle of that bulge, there's all these little stress fractures and stuff. So that has been that way since I got the car, probably some time before. Obviously this split wasn't here, but I have theorized that maybe long before I ever got a hold of this car, it was overheated badly, which damaged the tank and is the reason that this engine has been remanufactured. A keen-eyed viewer pointed out there's a tag over on the side that indicates this was a factory remanufactured engine, which is really cool. Um, and that explains why George, my goodness, you scared me. George just scared me to death. Um, apparently 90 degree hoods are a great place to stand on my plastic grill. George, that is not... Hey, hey, no, stop that. Stop that. Come on, I gotta get you down from there, bud. Come on. I think I've explained my theory. Let's put the new one on. <laughs> Alright, so this should just fit in and line up with all of our holes. This may need to get tweaked a little bit. Yeah, there we go. All three of those line up nice and neat. George is inspecting everything else. I also got a new cap for this so we can just rule that out in case there was too much pressure in there because it wasn't relieving or whatever. Yeah. Now we've got some Xerox G05 that we're going to mix with some distilled water in a separate container and pour in here. Alright, so uh, we've got our Xerox here and uh, despite the uh, color, it, it I assure you this is the specified coolant. So let's see how much of this I can spill.
Okay. I am way over full there, but there may also be some entrapped air other places in the system. So. At this point, I'm going to clean up some tools, start the car up with the cap off, and just see how everything sounds and if it's happy or if there could be something else afoot. Aside from a cold mist fire, which has now gone away, seems like it's running fine, doesn't sound like it's down a cylinder or anything, so I think it was just 40 years of fatigue. Perhaps we have figured out why this engine was rebuilt. That could be it. If it overheated and, you know, damaged this, that, that could be a clue for us. But anyways, I think we're back in business here. So yeah. New coolant bottle. Thanks for watching.